I decided to make this video uh, with the free time I had uh, before I go in back to work. So as I was running my errands and taking care of the stuff I had to, since I have this time, I was actually seeing on Facebook or YouTube, you know, you, you know what I've actually seen? There, there have been two manifestations I have seen. There have been the manifestations of hell, of hell on earth. And everyone already knows that, but I'm talking about in the church. I'm not talking about in the world. I'm talking about inside the church, inside our own hearts, because we are the church. So the first manifestation I'm gonna talk about, I need to talk about the bad before I can talk about the good. The bad one I've seen. There's a lot of people fighting, people causing division among the church, calling each other names, calling each other just certain things or saying that we um, are acting in a way, acting like we're better than one another, acting like we're holier than one another, or just because somebody gets a revelation off, we call them, we say, you're an idiot or you're stupid. We, we say those things, which is very, very wrong. <laughs> but what I start to see from there is people that tend to have dried up fruit or actually dried up branches without bearing any fruit and there's a lot of stuff I saw and I'm not just talking about one page I'm talking about YouTube I'm talking everywhere I see if I sometimes I get curious I go look at the comments and I see um, people calling someone else a false prophet people trying to crucify the movement of God when somebody's on fire for God and we call ourselves Christians but yet I don't like the way that guy preached. Oh, I don't like the way I don't like the way that person is. Oh, that person is too judgmental. Oh, that person they they're a false prophet because they got that revelation wrong because the way I know it it's it's an it's a better interpretation than theirs. I would have been doing it better. I would have done this. I would have done this. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. And then these are actually the same people that have the wrong revelation so that and they speak out of their emotions instead of feelings. So where am I getting at? This is a way, well, let, me, let me break this down for you, with a loving rebuke, a loving rebuke, not a, not a blasphemous, not a condemnation, a loving rebuke, a rebuke is a correction. So for all this, and because, and I'm not saying this as, as a way where I'm right about every single thing, no, I'm saying this as a loving rebuke by scripture, not by my own words. So this issue, division in the church, while Hollywood, secular people of the world, atheists, Satanists, people in the satanic occult, uh, or, you know what, let me show you part of this. Part of my testimony, as some of you may know, some of you may not know, I was in the New Age. I was practicing yoga, meditation, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, some parts of voodoo. If you've ever heard of the Wim Hof method where you control your body temperature to, to raise up the temperature like a Buddhist monk, sometimes I even used to have my shirt off, work out so much and have my shirt off where I can control my body temperature. I had extra senses and yeah, some people might call me crazy because you know, this is this is all real. If, you have, if you've ever even heard of Daredevil, that show or the movie, the senses back then where I used to want the senses on your hearing, impaired hearing, or the super hearing like Daredevil, I had that. And it was all by spiritual demonic stuff. And I got PTSD because of that. And God had to save me from that. And then later on I met my fiance. But why do I say that is because why is it that people like this or people how uh, the way I used to live, people like that in the secular world, why are they more united than Christians? Why? Are we bashing one another? And I'm not saying we're all going to be right. There are times we need to correct someone on their doctrine. But you know the way, the way you can correct someone, if you can't correct them in that loving way, then what's the point of even correcting them? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul, even in that entire chapter, Paul says, if I prophesy over someone, I pray over someone, if I do something for someone, all these sacrifices for someone, and if I don't have love, then I have nothing. Jesus showed us that love is what fulfilled the law. It's what fulfilled it. As he says that love is perfect love cast out fear. This is all in 1 John 4. And, but I've also noticed the people, and I'm not saying this whole love, love, love mentality because we have to have a balance. The mentality of 
love also shows we love someone so much that we don't want them to perish so this is why we tell them not in a way of condemnation but we tell them these things so they don't perish so they don't so they can actually grow in christ we're all here to correct one another if and this is why i say we had to regather the flock and i've already talked about this in my other videos where god had shown me on December 5th of 2019 and building up to the project uh, 2020 the year of the mouth it's a prophecy coming soon for this 2020 year you'll start to see a young generation such as myself or someone else even younger than me I've already seen manifestations happening a younger generation will rise up and most of you will say well that's a lie that's not from God but let me show you go and go back and look at my at my document uh, the year of the mouth, 2020, the year of the mouth. I'm going to show you, and I, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to tell you, just go back and look at it. Because as the Gentiles, some of you have already seen prophecy. If you haven't seen my videos, go back and look at them. I explain the prophecies of, of what God has done with the Jews and going back to Jerusalem where Jesus would come back uh, in the second coming. But wherever, whenever the Jews came back to Jerusalem, God also showed that if the Jews were coming back to Jerusalem, then that means the Christians shall regather together. Even though the multitude may be small, it shall still rise. And if the Gentiles, if we were once Gentiles, and if we're really not grounding ourselves in the Word of God, we will return back to our state as a Gentile. Do you understand that? It's a very twisted thing when people, we call ourselves Christians and yet we can't even act like a Christian. We can't even show some mercy and grace to someone as a Christian. Now, I'm not saying to take the place of God. I'm saying to show it and to manifest it the way God would. And that's why I say it's a bad, it's a, it's a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare with that manifestation of heaven and hell. When we got religious Christians acting like they're holier than someone or acting like they're better than someone and trying to, even if they were right, because I, I had to go through this to understand this. Even if you were right on your revelation, why would you try to prove yourself more worthy or the way you come off is more worthier than that person and for the people that are soft that don't want to focus on repentance the gummy bear Christians the soft weak Christians weak Christians who don't want to hear about repentance who don't want to hear about that y'all need to get yourself checked out too so that's why I say there is a balance that has to happen but also it's this this mentality in both sides that causes division in the church and Go back there's many scriptures to support this but that's all the hellish part but i want to tell you something a beautiful thing i saw today with a heaven manifestation from what god has done not with just me but what he's done bringing us all together what god has done bringing us all together on maybe facebook he's probably brought us on a certain page he's probably brought us together on youtube and i saw two this is just two examples i've already seen a big manifestation but I just want to give two small examples. One person, I've already talked about this in my other video I just gave. So, actually, let me explain to you first. I need to explain this. Just like I talked about the other video, I made a video, a video earlier today in the morning uh, saying, I think it's overflow. When I was showing how God overflows when, we're over, when our cup overflows with God's Holy Spirit. When our cup overflows. Think of it from that video I gave this morning. I turn on the sink to show you that manifestation on how God, we have to align ourselves with the way of that sink and how God will have us align ourselves with our empty vessels, our empty cup. And as it, the water keeps on pouring until it overflows, I put two cups there. And is there are two cups there inside the sink? Well, the big cup, which is us overflowing, there's the last, the overflowing cup, it drips water. It drips water into the empty cups, the other empty vessels that are right next to us. They're not aligned up with the same fountain. They're not aligned up with the same sink in that same area to receive the water. But it's overflowing onto them. One cup might not have as much. One cup might have a drop. One cup might have a little bit more. And that's what I'm talking about. When instead of fighting and having division in the church, we should be letting our cup overflow and letting it drip on to someone else where they see that manifestation of God, just like in the book of Acts, where they saw the manifestation and I was reading this yesterday and I had to keep on going over and over and over reading this yesterday as there was an example of the book of Acts when Peter and the apostles preached to them and they saw this manifestation. The people, it said it pricked into their hearts, meaning it, it really dug into their hearts and did something to them as Peter and 
and the apostles preached the word of God. And with these manifestations, the people said it pricked into their hearts and they said, what do we do? How do I get saved? There should be this conviction, but all with love, this loving conviction, a loving rebuke, not a, con not a, not a rebuke of condemnation. So now that you understand that with the overflowing of the cup, if that makes any sense, I hope it does. Now I can talk about this. So I had two people reach out to me from my videos and it's not, I don't have a huge platform in anywhere. Uh, I just want to reach people because I love the unity of Christ. But I saw one person for a while, this, my Nigerian brother in Christ in Africa, he had reached out to me and he had said that he was asking, he was telling me happy new year's bro. And, um, this is just today. And later on we started talking and I don't want to talk. I don't, I don't want to give a description of him. I don't know. But he said, actually, that if in a last month, he didn't even know if he wanted to even, he didn't even know if he even wanted to continue living this life or he wanted to give up. And from a brother of ours, a brother that I follow uh, sometimes on YouTube, and I have him on, and I see him sometimes in his Facebook videos, Marcus Rogers. And most of you probably know this guy, Marcus Rogers. So it all started with Marcus Rogers. Marcus Rogers with his obedience to God making all these videos and of course a lot of young people were touched by them including myself and what I saw is that as he was being he was tired and a lot of people were bashing him about what he said about Donald Trump and how Donald Trump is in the prophecy and meanwhile I'm over here in my own box with God and I'm over here in my own little area with God and God's showing me these revelations on how it shows a prophecy by each teacher and prophet and also what he showed me and go back and you can go back and look at that video too. Uh, is Donald Trump appointed by God? Impeach the peach, the quote, quote. But, and I showed that where Donald Trump is appointed by God and it shows every prophecy from other prophets or teachers that don't even know each other and it perfectly aligns up in that video. So I don't think Marcus Rogers was able to respond because he has so many comments, but my comment I put was, uh, hey brother, like I'm glad you put this and uh, praying for you. And I, and I even mentioned, I even sent him the link on the comments. I know he probably didn't see it because he has a lot of people, but a lot of people did see that video or they saw the comment I put and they saw the link. So when they saw that, they were really touched by it. And other people started um, messaging me, asking me or a friend requesting me. And this is when I met this Nigerian brother of mine. And when he had reached out to me and I asked him, yeah, I just want to know, how did you find my, how did you find me? And he's a real respectful man. So humbling that it humbled me, if that makes sense. And as he reaches out to me that time, he says he felt like giving up. And when we we're on the phone today, he had said that a month ago, he felt like giving up until he saw that comment. And I told him about it, man, if it wasn't for Marcus Rogers and his obedience to God, then none of this would have happened. And if it wasn't for God placing Marcus Rogers in that place, then none of this would have happened. So you see how everything perfectly lines up when we submit and when there is no division in the word of God, when there is no division in the body of Christ. So, that was a, a huge manifestation and I got excited because me and this brother, he even said, I mean, I'm, I'm over here in America, this guy's in, in, in Nigeria and Africa and there's so much we're talking about and I felt like I was, I felt this huge loving craving to know more, to keep, to grow a relationship further because this brother, I'm telling him about my fiance back and forth, we're exchanging. Some of you might not like it, getting out of your comfort zone. Some of you might want to only talk. I'm full Hispanic. Some of you might only want to talk with Hispanics. Some of you might only want to talk with black people. Well, let me tell you, my fiance is part black. But, and me and this brother are just going back and forth. I don't see skin. I don't see anything. And we're over here uh, communicating. And, and it's, a, it's an awesome thing. And it gives me a, that glimpse, that small glimpse of heaven. When you don't even care. You don't even care about... The denomination you're just glad that this brother is also grounded in christ and that this brother is back with christ that he didn't give up he didn't he didn't want to kill himself he didn't want to lead up to that point because i know how it feels when i almost wanted to kill myself especially out of the new age when these all when i allow these demonic demons to come in through that manifestation of meditation and yoga and all this and when i saw that i was really touched by it so tonight we're gonna pray tonight me and him we're gonna we're gonna uh, call each other back in Facebook. We're gonna pray, and anyone's welcome to even ask for this too. We can, and if you want to call, we can pray online together. But what I also saw another manifestation is that when I posted on Yeshuans uh, 
page that my, my sister in Christ had showed me a, a video and that's when I saw the page and, and now that's why I'm a new member on the page. Well, I saw somebody reached out to me, I think it was from that page, and she said she saw my document of 2020 Year of the Mouth when I showed what God had showed me and I sectioned it the way that God uh, had me section it. And when she said she was reading it, that she, I think it lost connection or something. So she couldn't find it. So when she found my Facebook profile, she added me and I didn't know who she was. So I don't really add anyone else I don't know back. But lately I have been because I've been only doing that because I feel like we need to come together and unite as a body of Christ. It doesn't matter where you're from. So this sister, I think she's from, I think it's all British, British Columbia, something like that. And I'm so messing with you right now. So I'm not going to go into detail who they are. I just want to use these as an example because these two examples were that manifestations of heaven where you don't care about anything else at the moment where and i'm saying i'm not saying not to have discernment we have to have discernment and correct each other but first let's focus on the big picture we got to grow together and unite because as a sheep has to regather together and we have to manifest what god has given us we have to manifest heaven because we got to live on earth as it as it is in heaven well the world they're gathering together and it's embarrassing actually when they're gathering together and they're more united than the body of Christ. And that's why I felt like I had to make this video. And I know there are, and I, I mean, I have a busy schedule. I have to, I have a lot of stuff to do right now, but I really felt like I had to share this real quick because it's, it's very sad. And it's very sad that we have Christians condemning one another, even though they're right on some issues. But it's also sad that we have a weak body of Christ on a majority of, of, um, on the majority of issues, on the majority of, of the things we see, such as homosexuality. We don't have any backbone to even speak against it, but yet we don't have any love and grace to, to show some mercy to our homosexual brothers and sisters that need to be taken out of that bondage. And there, that's just one example. There are many other things. So let this video be an encouragement to you. And I, I'm not going to say I know everything I don't, but if you guys want prayers, if you guys want to learn about something else, or if you want to, I guess, make fun of me, because I know some people I've already have. I've already had someone speak witchcraft over me, and I've already said this before. But, you know, if you guys want to reach out, you're more than welcome to. And, yeah, continue praying. Let us all pray for each other uh, back and forth. You know, if you have any prayer requests, we can all go back and forth with each other on the prayer. You know, I'd say <coughs> if you're going to go back, if you want to go back and forth, instead of arguing, let's just go back and forth when it comes to praying. I'd say let's just substitute it with that. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And God bless you guys. Hope you have a, I hope you guys have a great day. And man, this wind is really blowing. God bless you.